Dr. Vlachos from the University of Ioana in Greece. He will try to convince you that there is a new class of minimals and manifolds. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you for the nice introduction. I would like to thank the organizers for the kind invitation, Jose in particular. So the title of my talk is, as Marco said, a new class of minimal submanifolds. And I mean, the subject is basically the content. I mean, apart from old results and known results, the content of those two uh, joint papers with Marcos. So uh, before I explain what is uh, hidden in this tile, let me uh, state clearly from the very beginning what is the problem that we are interested in. So it is a problem, a very basic problem in the theory of sub of submanifolds or isometric immersions. So the problem says that given an isometric immersion of a Riemannian manifold into a space form denoted there by Q n, uh, so the question is if given such an immersion, if it is unique up to uh, isometries of the Abian space. So if it is unique in that case, then the immersion is called rigid. If not, then uh, the question is, can we describe the space of all uh, isometric deformations of the given immersion? Uh, so what is known? Let me start with the simplest case, which is the case of codimension one, the case of hypersurfaces. So locally, the problem was solved by Zbranak and Cartan about a century ago. Uh, but a modern uh, uh, treatment was given by uh, Marcos, Luis Florit, and Rito Yale. The solution to the case of compact hypersurfaces is due to Sachs-Detter, and uh, the complete case is due to Marcos and Gromov. So more or less the case of codimension one is, uh, has been settled. And the next interesting case, of course, is the case of codimension two. So as uh, the results I'm going to present, uh, you will see that the case of codimension two is quite challenging yeah? and far from being uh, completely solved. So, so the new thing about this uh, codimension two or maybe in, either, uh, in higher codimension is that one has to take into account that any submanifold of a deformable submanifold uh, has the deformation induced by uh, the later. Uh, so, in order to obtain classification, one has to exclude this kind of deformations, which are uh, called genuine uh, deformations. I mean, the, the study the remaining ones, which are called genuine deformations. So, what is exactly a genuine deformation? Given an isometric immersion, let's say to the Euclidean space of dimension n plus p. So, uh, uh, another deformation, f hat, Another isometric measure is called a genuine deformation of the given F if there is no open subset of our manifold MN along which the restrictions of the immersions F and F hat extend isometrically. So what's the meaning of that thing? So we say that two isometric immersions of uh, our manifold in the Euclidean space extend isometrically. This means that there exists another bending of Mn into uh, a manifold, let's say, N of dimension N plus Q. Uh, and there are isometric immersions, capital F and capital F hat, of N into the Euclidean space, which decompose in that way, uh, making the, this diagram uh, commuting. All right. So, Again, what is known about genuine deformation? It has been proved that genuine deformations are, are only possible for some class of uh, ruled submanifolds. Yeah, and Marcos and Luis gave actually a lower bound of the dimension of the rulings. Uh, there is, of course, the special uh, case where uh, uh, I mean. The genuine deformations without flat points I mean, have always rank at most four. So uh, what do we mean by rank at most four? Uh, we denote the rank by rho and it is usually, I mean, it is defined as the rank of the Gauss map 
or if you prefer, is the difference of the dimension minus nu. What is nu? Is the index of relative nullity, I mean the uh, dimension of the kernel of the second fundamental form. Or if you prefer, put it differently. A submanifold in the Euclidean space is said to be of rank R. Uh, if the relative nullity subspace defined that way, yeah, form a codimension R submanifold of the tangent bundle. Uh, so let, let us now see what is known for codimension two. So there are uh, local results of genuine deformations in the special case where the rank is equal to, and those results have been given by Marcos, Luis, and uh, Guillermo Freitas. In particular, we have minimal uh, uh, examples that were parametrically classified by uh, Marcos and Fleury. Uh, we're always talking about rank two. Uh, also, it is known that any simply connected uh, rank two minimal submanifold in any codimension actually allows a one parameter family of isometric deformation. This was shown by uh, Marcos and Grabol in 1985. Okay, so uh, let me mention just that the study of uh, the case of minimal submanifolds of rank two is interesting because it is uh, related to the special class of austere, related to the theory of austere submanifolds. Uh, so uh, the problem was solved for the case of uh, compact submanifolds in condimension two. Uh, uh, so what about non-compact uh, submanifolds? The only known, I mean, classification result on, for complete uh, codimension two sub submanifolds, non-compact, is the one that concerns uh, non-holomorphic emergence of minimal submanifolds into the Euclidean space. So these submanifolds are ruled. This means that they are fo folated by Euclidean space. And the rulings have a uh, codimension two, and the sum manifold is of rank four almost everywhere. So, uh, in particular, if the sub manifold is simply connected, then it is allows uh, in one parameter family of non trivial isometric deformations, uh, which is obtained in the uh, following way as in the case of minimal surfaces in any space form. So, you uh, rotate the second fundamental form, you keep the, uh, the normal connection, uh, you keep the normal bundle, and then you apply the, uh, the fundamental theorem of uh, uh, submanifolds. More specifically, if you have a, a minimal real uh, submanifold, F, and denote by alpha its second fundamental form, then for any theta in the circle, we consider this parallel uh, orthogonal tension field. Uh, J is the uh, complex structure of our Keller manifold, and I is, of course, the identity. And then construct this section of this homomorphism bundle defined in that way. B theta is actually uh, obtained by the second fundamental form of the submanifold, just rotating it. So uh, the minimality implies that uh, beta theta is symmetric. And one can uh, verify that beta theta satisfies the gauss kotatsi and Ricks equation. So the fundamental theory implies, using, of course, the uh, fact that the Keller manifold is simply connected, that there is an isometric minimal immersion, f theta, whose second fundamental form is given in that way. There, alpha f theta is psi theta of the second fundamental form of the rotated second fundamental form of the given Keller submanifold, and psi theta is a parallel vector bundle isometry. Uh, so, uh, uh, what about the triviality of the of this uh, family? Uh, we call this family the associate family of the given uh, Keller submanifold. So, uh, it is trivial only if and only if the uh, R measure is holomorphic with respect to some uh, complex structure of the Euclidean space. So uh, what is our aim? I mean, uh, 
we are, we are interested in the local or global problem of joining the formation of a geometric emergence in co dimension two, in the Euclidean space or in, or in the sphere, the usual sphere. Uh, we characterize a new class of complete or compact, at least for some uh, dimensions, genuinely deformable uh, Euclidean or spherical submanifolds of rank four. Uh, we show that now the second fundamental form changes is related to the second fundamental form of the given submanifold in a much more involved way. Uh, so uh, the results certainly indicate that the classification problem is uh, uh, certainly it's difficult. Uh, not to mention that, I mean, our results, besides the, uh, the fact that they are relating to this deformation problem, uh, I think that they are also interesting because they provide a method of constructing minimal submanifolds in co-dimension two. So before I give the, I mean, uh, the basic ingredient of our constructions is the theory of minimal surfaces in arbitrary co-dimension. So a minimal surface will be an isometric immersion of a two-dimensional oriented Riemannian manifold denoted by L2 into Qn plus two, where Q is the Euclidean space or uh, the sphere, the user, their sphere. Uh, there is a theory for, I mean, for surfaces in general, which is uh, some kind of sort of Frenet theory uh, uh, for curves, it's an analog of Frenet theory for curves. So there is a bunch of tensors whatever that satisfies several compatibility equations. So among those tensions are the so-called higher, higher order fundamental forms. So let me give the definition of, uh, of the higher fundamental forms and the corresponding uh, higher normal uh, spaces. So you have a minimal surface, G. Uh, we define the normal spaces in that way I mean, it's the space of order k, the normal space of order k at the point p is spanned by the image of the uh, higher fundamental form, which is denoted there by a k plus one. So uh, a two is just the uh, usual second fundamental form. N one is just the space spanned by the uh, second fundamental form. And what, uh, what is the definition of the rest higher fundamental forms? Here is the definition. You just take uh, higher uh, derivatives of the second fundamental form with respect to the normal connection, and then you project to that space, to the previous, uh, to the orthogonal problem, uh, orthogonal uh, space, to the orthogonal sum of the previous higher normal spaces. So that's the definition of the uh, higher fundamental forms. Uh, it turns out that the higher fundamental forms are symmetric, as the second fundamental form is. And uh, of course, we always assume that the minimal surface is substantial. This means that we cannot reduce the dimension of the, of the surface. It turns out that the, the, uh, the higher normal spaces are at most of dimension two, but uh, on an open and dense subset of the, of the surface, we have a splitting, an orthogonal splitting of the normal bundle in that way. So uh, all those bundles now are plain bundles, uh, except the last one, which has to be a line bundle when the codimension is odd. So uh, I need this definition. A surface is called K regular if the all subspaces, normal, uh, normal spaces of, of order up to K have constant dimension and thus uh, they form uh, vector bundles. So G is called just regular if it is regular for any K, meaning that we have that decomposition globally on the surface. Uh, this is not really a, rest a restriction because uh, it, this is true along an open and dense subset of the surface. Uh, we need also the, uh, the notion of higher ellipses, a notion that figures in the study of minimal surfaces in, high, in higher co-dimension. And uh, what is the, uh, the ellipse of order S is just the image of the unit tangent, tangent circle 
under the uh, corresponding higher fundamental form. It turns out that it is indeed an ellipse. And now the surface is called R isotropic if it is minimal, of course. A surface is called R isotropic if it is minimal. And all ellipses of curvature uh, of order at most R are circles. We are interested in particular in the case of one isotropic uh, surfaces, as you see, uh, as we will see later on. So the surface is just called isotropic if it is isotropic for any R. Uh, what is interesting, at least for, as I said to you, we are interested in uh, one isotropic surfaces in the Euclidean space or in the sphere, but uh, in particular for our isotropic surfaces in the Euclidean space, it is really uh, interesting that there is a sort of Weistas representation. So locally, we can give a parametric way to, uh, to produce all of them, yeah? Uh, for example, holomorphic curves in, the, in uh, CP are P minus one isotropic surfaces. And here is the uh, Weistas representation, so I'm not getting into details. I'll just say that if you start with some holomorphic data, there is a way to produce uh, uh, isotropic curves in complex spaces, and then uh, you end up with a surface which has alpha r plus one as a Gauss map. So, I mean, that's the way to get all air isotropic surfaces, air isotropic surfaces in, in the Euclidean space. So, uh, there is a notion of the associated family, of course, for minimal surfaces in any space form, which is defined in a similar way as the definition we gave for uh, the associated family of real minimal submanifolds. So let me uh, say this again. So you have, take a theta in S1, consider this uh, orthogonal parallel tensor field, which is the rotation on its state plane. Uh, consider this the second fundamental form of the surface, rotate it, then it is again easy to see that the, uh, this uh, section of the, this bundle satisfies the Gauss-Kotatsi-Ritz equation. So again, we get a minimal surface in the space form whose second fundamental form is given in that way, and phi theta is a parallel vector bar isometry. Uh, in the special case, of minimal submanifolds in the Euclidean space, there is another way, a simpler way, to describe the associate family. So the associate family is given as this line uh, integral. Uh, in that case, the bundle isomorphism is nothing just a parallel identification of the higher normal subbundles of the given surface and any surface in the associate family, J and J theta. Uh, again, comes the question of the triviality of the associated family. So the associated family of a minimal surface in a space form is trivial if and only if the surface is isotropic and uh, the dimension uh, of the abin space is even. Triviality, of course, means that all surfaces in the associated family are congruent. Uh, so, for example, minimal, uh, I mean, isotropic surfaces in the Euclidean space in even could I mention are always holomorphic curves with respect to some parallel complex structure of the Ebbing space. Isotropic surfaces in even dimensional spheres are called pseudo-holomorphic curves. And, study, and have been studied by several people, Calabi, CERN, and several other people. So now we are ready to start the construction, but uh, to do that we need the first normal bundle. Of, the, of, the, of a minimal surface. We start with a, one isotropic surface. So this means that the first ellipse of curvature is a circle. And uh, we consider the first normal spaces. But it may happen that the first normal spaces drop uh, dimension. But this proposition, already known from CERN and Calabi, says that basically the set of points where the first normal space drops dimension is, uh, consists of isolated points. Yeah. And uh, the first normal space can 
smoothly extended to a plane bundle even at those uh, points. So the reason for that is that the singular points of the first normal space is, are actually of holomorphic type. So when we have a one isotropic minimal surface, uh, then we can consider the following bundle, which is fundamental for, uh, for our construction. So we have a bundle denoted there by lambda g, and is a bundle, a vector bundle, of course, of rank n minus 2. Uh, the fibers of, the, of that bundle are exactly the orthogonal complement in the normal bundle of the first normal bundle. So, as I said before, N1G is always uh, a bundle. Now comes the definition of the, of the uh, submanifold uh, in the Euclidean case. Start with uh, one isotropic surface and consider this map denoted by FG, which depends associated to uh, the surface G. It's a map from the bundle lambda G. Lambda G is a bundle a sub-bundle of the normal bundle of the surface of rank n minus 2, and which is defined in that way. So Fg is nothing else but the exponential map of the Euclidean space along the surface restricted to that sub-bundle lambda g of the, surface, of the normal bundle of the surface. It turns out that the Fg is always an immersion. There are no singular points. And uh, for the rest of the talk, I will denote by Mn the, the manifold, the Riemannian manifold lambda g, which is equipped with the metric induced by the immersion Fg. Uh, it is clear that Fg is an n minus 2 root submanifold. What is the meaning of that? This means that there is an integrable distribution of the tangent bundle of Mn, which has dimension n minus 2. And uh, the leaves of that distribution are mapped diffeomorphically into complete subspaces of the Euclidean space. Uh, now, uh, I need to uh, say that, I mean, the tangent bundle of the, the manifold Mn, which is the bundle lambda g, is split uh, in this way as an orthogonal sum of the vertical bundle which is denoted there by V, and this, this is the kernel of, the, uh, of uh, the differential of pi. Pi is the natural projection of our bundle. We call V the vertical bundle, and H is just the uh, horizontal bundle, which, I mean, the distribution H is the distribution which is orthogonal to the rulings. I also need to talk about uh, integral surfaces of the uh, distribution. What is an integral surface of the, of the uh, distribution H, of the horizontal distribution? It's just an embedded surface into our manifold with the property that the tangent plane is exactly uh, the fiber uh, of the horizontal distribution. And now we have the, the the result for the Euclidean case start with a one isotropic minimal surface, always substantial, and we consider the associate immersion defined in that way. Uh, as I said before, this is an n minus two rule submanifold, but it turns out that it is a minimal submanifold of rank four uh, almost everywhere. I mean, on an open subset of n. It is clear, it is uh, obvious that the rulings are complete and uh, the integral surface L2, which is now viewed as, a, as the zero section of the, uh, of the bundle Mn, is unique and totally geodesic. Moreover, the metric, the reduced metric or the manifold can be complete if the surface is complete. Uh, the, converse is, the converse is also true. I mean, uh, we provide the characterization for this uh, sort of uh, n minus two real uh, minimal submanifolds. Uh, more precisely, let f be n n minus two real, uh, ruled minimal submanifolds of rank four. Uh, then assume that there exists, of course, a tangent distribution orthogonal to the rulix that admits a total geodesic integral surface, which is a global 
cross-section to the rulings. Then we consider the surface defined in that way. We, de we compose uh, the integral surface with the, an immersion F. It turns out that this surface is one isotropic, is minimal and one isotropic, and the, actually the uh, submanifold can be obtained uh, in that way. So we get uh, this new family and we provide a characterization of this uh, new family. Uh, so what are the exactly the, the what is exactly the relative nullity in that case? We have the as we said the vertical bundle, the vertical distribution, which can be decomposed orthogonally in that way as v1 and v, v0, you know, uh, almost everywhere. So v1 denotes a plane bundle which is defined by the second normal bundle of the surface. Uh, it turns out that the relative nullity leaves of the submanifolds are already defined with the fibers of that V node part of the vertical bundle. Uh, just to get an idea, of course, the proof involves several, I mean, long computations. This, these are exact, these are the high, I mean, the, the shape operators of the uh, AFR submanifolds with respect to some frame, tangent frame and frame in the normal bundle. Actually, the, the minimality of the, of the submanifold is, uh, comes uh, from the Ricci equations for the uh, one isotropic surface. Now I'm going to discuss, to discuss the deformability of this class of submanifolds. And to that purpose, I need to define the net amorphism of the tangent bundle of the manifold uh, denoted by J in that way. Uh, J restricted to the uh, horizontal uh, subbundle is that it's just the almost complex structure. So the horizontal subbundle is a plain bundle. And uh, J is defined to be the identity uh, on the vertical bundle. And we denote, of course, J theta this uh, uh, endomorphism of the tangent bundle. Now, in this theorem, we discuss the uh, the associate family, so this kind of manifolds, turns out that this kind of manifolds, manifolds allow in one parameter family of deformation in the, in the following way. Assume that the surface, we have a surface, one isotropic surface, which is simply connected. Then our uh, submanifold, which is associated to the uh, surface G, allows in one parameter family of minimal genuine isometric deformation. F theta, of course, F naught is the given submanifold, and uh, all those uh, uh, immersions in that family uh, share the same rulings and the same relative uh, nullity as the given uh, submanifold. Uh, now, we're going to uh, see how the second fundamental form of the of F theta, F F G are related. As we can see, uh, the relation is given by this formula, which is more involved than the uh, way that the uh, second fundamental form of the associated family of Keller uh, minimal submanifolds uh, is given. So, in fact, there exists a parallel vector band isometry again between the normal bundles of FG and the normal bundle of uh, any F theta in that associate family. And the relation between the second fundamental forms is this one, where R theta is the rotation of angle uh, theta on the normal bundle of the submanifold, which is a plane bundle. Uh, kappa is the radius of the uh, first ellipse of curvature, which is circular. And beta is a certain traceless symmetric section of this bundle whose nullity is exactly V, the, horizontal, the, the vertical bundle. Uh, so it's just an observation. I mean, uh, the previous result uh, was about uh, manifolds of dimension at least four, but uh, same uh, proof works also for three-dimensional submanifolds of rank three. Uh, let me now discuss the, I mean, the triviality of this uh, associate family. 
uh, it turns out that if you have a holomorphic surface in the Euclidean space, totally isotropic, let's say, all curvature edge are circle, and then using these uh, symmetries of the higher fundamental forms, one can define an intrinsic isometry on the manifold, which is indeed a rotation on its higher normal bundle. So the theorem says that if G is holo holomorphic, then we have a kind of triviality, but up to an intrinsic isometry. It's not the usual triviality. In other words, uh, this means that when G is holomorphic, then the submanifold we can construct is equivalent with respect to this one parameter family of intrinsic isometric of uh, the manifold. Now let's uh, talk about the spherical case. Uh, so again, the basic ingredient is one isotropic surfaces in spheres. But unfortunately, uh, there is no way to uh, parameterize locally all one isotropic surfaces in spheres. And this is due to the lack of Weierstrass representation for minimal surfaces in spheres. So, but in that case, uh, I can only say that there are uh, families of one isotropic surfaces in, in spheres. Let me give you some uh, examples of families. So the first family uh, of one isotropic surfaces is uh, due to Lawson, and it is contract, constructed in the following way. Uh, start with a minimal surface in, in, a, in, a, in the three sphere, consider its usual associate family, and then uh, take uh, an immersion into the sphere of that dimension, which is actually uh, a direct sum of uh, surfaces in the associate family. So we have several parameters, theta 1 up to theta p, and numbers which satisfy this uh, equality. Uh, it turns out that these surfaces are indeed minimal, and for uh, appropriate choos cho choice of the parameters, it turns out to, uh, that these surfaces are uh, one isotropic. So we have plenty of one isotropic surfaces uh, in that family. Uh, so the next maybe uh, interesting family is the one of uh, holomorphic curves in the nearly Keller sphere S6. So it is known that the, using the, 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 the Kelly numbers, the multiplicate structure of the Kelly numbers, one can define an almost complex structure on the six sphere, which is not integrable, but it is nearly Keller. So what are holomorphic curves in that uh, sphere? Just uh, non-constant maps from a minimal surface uh, into that sphere whose differential is uh, complex linear. So uh, uh, one can prove that the second fundamental form of these complex uh, holomorphic curves satisfy this relation. J is the uh, complex structure of the surface, and that J uh, is the almost complex structure of the sixth sphere. And this, equ this equation, uh, this property of the second fundamental form clearly implies that the surface is minimal, so holomorphic curves in uh, the key in S6 are always minimal, and the first ellipse of curvature is a circle. In other words, all these kind of holomorphic curves in S6 are one isotropic. So again, we have a huge family of uh, one isotropic uh, surfaces in that way. Needless to mention that, I mean, uh, minimal surfaces, which are uh, topological spheres, uh, are uh, again one isotropic surfaces. And this family of surfaces has been studied by Calabi and then later by uh, Chern. So if we start again with an one isotropic surface, substantial in the sphere, again we have the same bundle. I, let me remind what lambda g is. is a vector bundle of rank n minus 2. And the fibers is exactly uh, the orthogonal complement of the first normal band. Lambda g is just the orthogonal complement of the first normal band of the given surface. So uh, how we construct our examples in the, in the case of sphere? Given a, a, a one isotropic surface, we consider the manifold of the sphere, uh, which constructed 
which is constructed in the following way. We attach, at each point of the surface, the uh, n minus 2 total geodesic sphere, which is tangent to the fibers of that bundle. In other way, we define uh, our submanifold uh, in this way, where uh, x is, of course, the exponential map of the sphere. So we restrict, the, again, the exponential map of the sphere uh, along the surface on the normal bundle uh, on the sub-bundle lambda g of the normal bundle of the one isotropic surface. Uh, so again, the submanifold we construct, which, uh, as, we, as we will see, might develop singularities. Again, this is an n minus two ruled submanifolds. Uh, what's the meaning of that uh, thing in the spherical case? Again, our uh, the tangent bundle. Uh, has a uh, integrable uh, subbundle of uh, dimension n minus 2 whose leaves are mapped uh, to open subjects of total geodesic n minus 2 spheres of our Abin space. Uh, however, it is uh, more convenient to, in order to, uh, to study this uh, spherical submanifold, to uh, deal with the corresponding uh, cone in the Euclidean space. So we consider this map, G, which is a map from air cross our uh, vector bundle into the Euclidean space that way. It is clear that this is uh, a cone. Uh, but now we have to uh, rule out singularities. It turns out that, uh, in general, uh, we may have singularities. So in particular, if we start with substantial minimal surface, not even uh, one isotropic, then we can always uh, construct that cone. And it turns out that the set of uh, singular points of the cone, I mean aside from uh, the vertex, is that thing. So it is basically all vectors in the fibers of our bundle which are perpendicular to the second normal uh, space of the surface. Uh, so what is now the, the, I mean, what is the definition? I mean, how can I produce the spherical submanifold in that way? We consider this manifold, which is basically uh, the unit normal bundle of this new vector bundle, which is air cross our vector bundle lambda g. And then we just intersect, I mean, the sphere with a cone. So our submanifold is now by definition g restricted to this uh, uh, manifold. Uh, so, of course, the submanifold, the manifold can be complete if G is complete and we have no singular points. Uh, in particular, if the surface, the given surface is uh, regular, then in dimension uh, f 3 and 4, there are no singular points. So, the, uh, our submanifold is free of singular points. But if the dimension is at least five, then we can always encounter singular points, even if the surface is uh, regular. Uh, again, uh, I, we need the, uh, the notion of the integral surface. We have the, in a similar way, the, the, the uh, horizontal bundle, the horizontal distribution, what an, an integral uh, uh, surface of the horizontal distribution is just a surface with the property that the tangent plane coincides with a, a corresponding fiber of the horizontal uh, distribution bundle. All right, now comes the theorem, which is uh, similar to the theorem of the Euclidean case. We have a one isotropic substantial surface uh, of dimension, let's say, uh, at least four. The, the case n is equal to three is similar. Uh, then the associated spherical submanifold turns out to be a minimal submanifold, n minus two rule, with rank uh, four almost everywhere on an open and dense subset of the submanifold. Moreover, the integral surface L2 uh, to the horizontal uh, bundle is total geodesic and unique up to composing with. Uh, uh, and a pondal map. Uh, the converse is also true. I mean, 
if you have a n minus two rule, minimal submanifold in the sphere of dimension at least four and uh, of nullity four, then assuming that uh, the, uh, the, the tangent distribution orthogonal to, to the rulix allows an integrable surface which is totally geodesic and a global cross section to the rulix, then the surface restricting our manifold uh, along the, the integral surface, we get a surface in the sphere which turns out to be isotropic and the spherical submanifold is obtained exactly in that way. So we get we have a characterization of this family and again comes the uh, question of the uh, of deformation of this family. If we start now with a simply connected one isotropic substantial surface, then again we have a one parameter family of minimal uh, genuine isometric deformation which again uh, share the same uh, rulings and uh, relative nullity uh, leaves. Now, uh, again, the discussion about the triviality of the associated family. Uh, uh, so we have, again, uh, uh, triviality up to an intrinsic isometry in the case where the surface is pseudo-holomorphic in even dimension. Uh, so in that case, we can define the, an intrinsic isometry, of, again, of, of the manifold, which is basically a rotation of the same angle on each uh, higher normal subbundle. And... Uh, we get that in that case, the, sur the submanifold F theta in the associated family is congruent to that one. So we have triviality up to this intrinsic uh, isometry. Uh, so using this method, we can produce compact examples of minimal uh, um, submanifolds of co-dimension two in S5, in S6. Uh, if we start with uh, a compact one isotropic uh, surface, which is regular, then the associated submanifold is always is compact, of course. Uh, so, uh, and there are uh, families of compact one isotropic surfaces in S5 or in S6, uh, a lot of them. Uh, for example, we have minimal two spheres that were studied by Calabi and and others, and uh, the condition to be regular means exactly that the area has to be uh, 24 times pi. And this space of, uh, is uh, exactly this, this homogeneous space. So we have plenty of such surfaces. And uh, now we can discuss the set of isometric uh, deformations in the case where the uh, the static surface is not uh, necessarily simply connected. So in that case, the set of all equally ruled minimal isometric immersions uh, has to be either finite or parameterized by S1. So either the space of, of this kind of deformation is the circle. So we have again the associated family either, even if the uh, original surface is not simply connected or the set is finite. If the surface is compact, then this set uh, deformations has always to be finite. And now I'm going to finish my talk with uh, this uh, long-standing problem which is, uh, uh, which was stated by uh, Chern, Dokamo, Kombayashi. It concerns compact minimal submanifolds in spheres. Uh, so if you consider the space of all compact minimal, the set of all compact minimal submanifolds in spheres of given dimension and co-dimension with constant scalar curvature, the problem is, is the set of possible values of the, of the scalar curvature uh, discrete. Uh, there are rather few uh, examples of um, this kind of uh, minimal submanifold spheres with constant uh, scalar curvature. But our uh, method uh, adds these new examples. So if you start with a flat, one isotropic torus in S5, then the associated uh, submanifold is, a com is of course a compact minimal submanifold with a constant scalar curvature minus one third. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs>